Welcome to the Zoom Cafe. Here is where you will be served with a potion that empowers you to blow away your familiar routines, stagnant situations, or challenging relationships that no longer support or empower you. Boldly join the circle of creative friends who will help you to set your sail for a new horizon and give birth to your dream. Dear friend, you were born with the capacity to catch a great vision for your life. You were programmed to live your dream. The guiding light is within you. Seek inside your heart to find the creative power that wants to be you. Focus on recreating yourself. We're waiting for you in the cafe and outside of it to emerge. Use your creative energy. Land your brush fearlessly on the canvas and behold how you will be miraculously guided toward the next. As you move forward, your confidence and courage increases. Don't let doubt stop or prevent your actions. Open the portal to your inherited creative power and go forward as it was meant for you to do. Boldly give birth to a new you as an artist who develops expression through courage to face every challenge in life. My name is Rosario. I'll be the Zoom Cafe uh, hostess. I'm happy to be here. I'm honored. Um, the email uh, that you're receiving will be coming from me. Art submissions weekly will be sent um, to my email and then um, we'll be sharing and um, participating in the weekly discussions. And I really invite you all, you know, to be here, you know, with your uh, camera on, your heart open and just be ready to share and to, you know, both giving and receiving from a place of, of play. You know, we're playing here. Um, the Zoom Cafe and the play mm -hmm. shop are becoming <laughs> a beautiful uh, um, merging um, for us to be here. And it really is uh, such a joy to begin your Saturday mornings with this beautiful group of open hearts. So, so welcome again. So part of the program, you know, we have the discussions, we have things that we we talk about. Like I said, um, I welcome all of you to participate and engage. And then after the discussions, we'll be sharing artwork, the focus being on what is it that you feel when you see a piece? What is it that draws you? You know, it's not like, oh, the, this is a beautiful face or that's a beautiful color. It's more like when I see this, what am I feeling? So that's the focus of the discussion. And then the final part of our program is sharing maybe an unknown master that um, is not known to the majority of, of society. And we'll be discussing um, their style and then using that style as inspiration for the following week um, as we continue, you know, with our painting assignment. And then, of course, you know, if you're here and if you've been part of this uh, play shop, it's not just about painting and creativity. A lot of the things, you know, we take them in our heart, we take them in our life and we grow um, in so many ways. So thank you so much um, for being here. And um, I'll give the floor to the first person that would like to introduce themselves, say your name, and you know what inspired you to be here to join us today. Hi, I'm Catalina. <laughs> Excuse my stuffy nose, the allergies. 
right now are insane. I'm in Georgia. I'm in the process right now. I'm only 19 years old. I'm pretty young. Um, I'm just figuring my life out. You know, I don't know. Ex- I The direction that I'm taking or the steps that I need to take are a little unclear right now. But I do know that I'm good with the things that I make. You know, I've realized whenever I make something at work, I'm I'm working on an, a project making an office and everything that I kind of think of I just make and it just works <laughs> and so I just realized I was good at this you know and I just started painting a couple months ago just like for fun um so yeah and I'm always into a deeper dive spiritually and if I can tie my spirituality with anything that I make then that's that's my inspiration you know and being able to bring a deeper depth into what i'm making for sure um so yeah i go to i go to college also um and do like a prophetic painting table so i'll just sit down talk to people and i'll be painting while i'm having a conversation with them and then i'll give it to them and it's just something very small quick you know so i was doing that a couple months ago and now i'm here So Catalina, I just want to say welcome. And um, I'm 67 and I'm still trying to figure out what what I'm doing with my life. So, you know, (laughs) (laughs) but I've been doing um, these play shops for about two years now. And um, I just really feel like I'm getting to a place where I feel like something's trying to break through. So I'm really excited for this session and just to stay consistent with the discipline of painting on a regular basis. Um, And in fact, over the break, I had a couple of paintings just really come through and that was very exciting. So I'm happy to see all old friends and welcome new friends and I'm just happy to be here. Um, I'm Iluna. I'm living in the north of Scotland in a spiritual eco village. And uh, I'm very happy here and I'm feeling uh, much more productive artistically. Uh, I was quite blocked where I was in the south of England. So I'm really happy now that it coincided with me starting. um, This is my third 10 week play shop. And the two coincided the magic of where I am and Rasuli's play shop and meeting everybody and it's like a family now and I just love it and I feel as if I haven't scratched the surface of what I'm capable of and the only way to do it is to be part of this. So I'm Kavita from Leicester in England and I've been part of the play shop family since 2022. I joined as a novice and the first session I was taken aback by the artistic skill of of the play shop members. Um, It was a little daunting, but the group welcomed me with with open arms and uh, I have enjoyed the process ever since. You lit, Master Asuli and the play shop family lit a creative fire that's been burning deeply since. And uh, what I've noticed is when we have these few weeks of separation, I really miss the group. So I think I have paint flowing through me as well as blood now. Well, I've been in and out of painting for a long time. And what I found is I'm happier when I am painting than when I'm not painting. And it had been a long time. And then when I saw these play shops, I signed up. So this also is my third time. And I'm feeling like, um, yeah, I miss it also when it's not going on. It's just become a part of my life to think about art and to be involved in art and just to do it every day. And this keeps me on track. So that's why I love it. Good morning, everyone. My name is Helia. I love art. And currently I'm working on a project named Helby, which I'm making um, both not making them, painting on them, painting on purses, painting on clothes. And I would love to expand that. Um, and the name Helbi comes from my name, which is Helia Behruz. And um, the fact that I love bees 
and I make them with like th this little bees and mm -hmm. how productive they are and how um, good they are and beneficial for our humans. Um, so I'm painting them and whenever I want to get disconnected from the sword, I do play with colors and I'm here to learn more and more because I do not know anything. <laughs> um, that's all. Hello, everybody. It's wonderful to be back here. And um, over the break, I took down all my paintings. I had so many nail holes in the wall and I decided that this is a fresh new beginning and I feel like meeting all of you and Master Rasuli has opened up a, a new portal to my expression that feels like an a inspirational IV. I've never found any medium, and I've done a lot of mediums um, like painting. Painting is like a soul medicine. It just um, takes me to a whole other place. So I'm really happy to be here and see familiar faces. It does feel like a family and these new people, uh, welcome. I'm Rondi, I'm from uh, the Clearwater, Florida area. People are more uh, familiar with that. I'm actually Indian Rock Beach. I love these play shops. This is also my third round of 10 sessions. And in that time, I've been so inspired by Master Rizzuli and his heart and soul what he puts into these um, sessions and classes, Master Rizzoli has made this container to actually share real feelings, real heartfelt feelings, because he shares. He opens that portal for us as he does in his paintings and who he is as a person. I just appreciate Giddy as well. She's always right on with her comments and with her feedback. I'm glad. To be part of this, I know Ostal Rasuli for the last six, seven years, and I had a honor to work with him into my dancing and performing arts. It's amazing because I never thought with one painting I can be so inspired and create the whole show out of one painting, which we have done, and we're looking forward to create something amazing with you ladies this time. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So I'm Hania and I'm doing art uh, more than 25 years. So, and I'm always looking for inspiration. So, and I'm here to learn more and be inspired with Mr. Rasuli. So I'm so excited. Thank you so much. And I, I'm so glad I can see each and every one of you here. Good morning, everybody. My name is Art. <laughs> I'm the quiet guy that sits in the back. So I don't say much, but I, I got to tell you, I'm always very inspired by everything I see every week. I work in a hospital, really fast environment. So I look forward to Saturdays when time stops and I get to um, be part of the play shops. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so much. I really, really prefer to be here on Saturday and begin my week Saturday with you, all of you, with everyone. I'm proud to be really honestly a part of a group of fabulous artists, wonderful artists. And uh, being included in this has been an honor. Thank you so much and hope to see you, more of you, longer, for longer periods. Yes. And of course, uh, without further ado, we have our master himself, Master uh, Rasuli, who uh, will be sharing with us today and is our light, our guide during the next 10 weeks. Thank you, Rasuli. Thank you. Good day to everybody. There are still several people missing that I don't know whether they have been trying to get in or what. But before anything else, I want to introduce my best student ever. Not only just student, my master as well. She is waiting outside the studio now. <laughs> She's been coming here to paint. This is the third year that she has returned. <laughs> one day, two days, five days, one month. 
But year after year, and she just came up there again, year after year, this is what she has created. This is her painting. And it has every element that I would be teaching you for as, as an artist to do, everything about it. The brush stroke, because she cannot hold the brush, it's just her beak. And she look, she turns her head up towards the sky and starts breathing some air or whatever it is, or, or sucking some air. And then she hit the glass and put it there. So whatever it is, that's her paint that she gets from, from the heavens and lands it on the glass in here. She, she's not afraid of my cat that jumps up and down in here. She does her own thing. Look in here. She is looking at her painting, sitting back and looking at her painting on the right-hand side, uh, right upper corner. You saw close up of the painting. But this is one of the greatest inspirations to paint and then sit back and find things in that. Don't paint with your mind, with your idea, with your thought. First, just do whatever you feel like doing on the canvas and then sit back and look at it. And from there on is the canvas that leads you. It's not you painting on the canvas. It's the beloved that leads you to make love. It's not you making love with the beloved. Where she comes from, I have no idea. Why is she here? I have no idea. And I keep on telling her, hey, you're a bird. It's the springtime. Why don't you go do your birding? What are you sitting in here on the glass and just painting? But it doesn't work on her. She just loves to paint. So anyway, that was my introduction to my best student. What an honor to have nature be your master. This series, I'm going to be teaching you the technique of painting that I have never done throughout 25 years of running these play shops. Because I believe technique is something that you've got to develop, not learn from somebody else. But now that we, we have traveled a long way to a point where we can enjoy being together, I want to take you into a journey within and have you paint from within, not from what you see. Every session, I would take you on a journey to one of the most powerful things that follows your steps in order to develop your full technical ability. So let's begin with uh, the very first one, which is the uh, power of observation. The ability to perceive the world in new ways is a special quality that develops artists, scientists, and creative entrepreneurs. The great poet and painter of early 20th century Khalil Gibran says, the business of art is rather to understand nature and to reveal her meanings to those unable to understand. It is to convey the soul of a tree rather than to produce a fruitful likeness of the tree. It is to reveal the conscious of the sea, not to portray so many foaming waves or so much blue water. The mission of art is to bring out the unfamiliar from the most familiar. You know him as poet, but he's also a great artist, and some of you have seen his works as well. But the guidance that, that we have for these series of play shops is to paint the spirit of things, not painting what you see. 
this is the development of the 21st century art as we move in forward. The journey of art, as you know, started with paintings just to show people what to do. Cave paintings to showing how to kill a, a bull or, or animals and on to the paintings that initial paintings of the um, Egyptians and on to the daikon paintings which was to connect us with religious belief with our faith and then mythological paintings took over where we were we would see Zeus and and you know the whole mythology of Greek and, and Romans and other countries. And that kept on going uh, to inspire people uh, either in the church or in the in their houses. So this type of painting continued all the way to the 18th century. 18th century, there was museum and there were people seeing paintings that did not belong to them and connecting with them. So painting shifted from what it was before into painting things that deals with ordinary life, like fruits, like, uh, you know, people walking on the street, those type of paintings, which we did not have in the icon paintings or mythological paintings. These were the paintings of ordinary things. And we moved on to see more and more the visual impact of painting. So it was built into developing the Impressionism, which was about uh, the technique of developing the painting, the colors, the way of seeing and reflecting. So that became a major movement of Impressionism and post-Impressionism through the 19th, late 19th and early 20th century. In the 20th century, painting turned into the avant-gardism. So it, different isms developed, like surrealism, realism, expressionism, and they were all concentrating on the visual impact of the painting, the technique of the artist, the colors, the balance and the harmony in the painting. All of these became the major concepts of 20th century, which led most of the artists of the 20th century to find their own individual technique of reflecting what they saw. Now we're moving on into something deeper. We have traveled all the way to the surface of the elements that reflected in the paintings. And now we want to go deeper and we are going deeper and deeper inside the expression that came from the artists. Now the journey is reaching for the soul of the artist, reaching for the soul of the painting not just the surface. It's not about technique or color or any of these things. So this journey that we are a part of making it, we call it inspirational art. It's the art that inspires. So this is the journey that we're taking. And I will teach you in this journey, the technique 
of developing the inner connection with the object. So we begin with the power of observation. To observe is probably the most important initial step in creating any type of art. Doesn't matter. Anything that you want to do, even if it's not fine art, if it's baking a special bread or planting something that you're creating, you're developing, that journey starts usually with your observation. And observation is a little bit different from just seeing, is looking deeper and deeper into what you're dealing with. And today I'll give you the first assignment on the observation. But I noticed that you guys introduce yourselves. I'm going to introduce myself to you too. I studied painting as a child, continued with the masters of miniature paintings. And I got to a depth of learning how to deal with a brush on the canvas, where to put more pressure on the canvas with a brush, where to put less pressure. It's, it was not about just going like this. It was about taking the brush, taking the paint, and as you land it on canvas, the landing has to have three base to it. It has to be strong. No doubt in it. Practice many times until you reach that point. That's when you would land your brush on the canvas. So keep on just painting in the air to practice. So when you land, you land with strength, with power. The next thing to pay attention to is to land it delicately. And the third thing is to paint with total emotion, total emotion. Shut off this idiot thing that is sitting there telling you what to do. Shut it off in any way you can, in any way you can. Listen to music, develop rhythm, get drunk, get high, whatever it takes for you to get rid of that is what you need in order to create. Land it with your emotion expressing itself as you land the brush on the canvas. It could be just one line on a canvas and could be your painting and could be an amazing work because of the expression that that line has from you. I was a painter even before I was a student. And I started painting and painting and went to art school instead of high school and learned to paint what I saw perfectly. I would just look at it and paint it, look at it, paint it, look at it, paint it. And I keep on doing it and doing it to the point that it was just perfect like what I saw. But when I went to college and I started studying painting, the very first year, you know, my advisor said, you have to take beginning painting. I said, are you kidding me? Beginning painting for me? I'm already no painting. These are my paintings. I have to take beginning painting. Anyway, through arguments, finally, we ended up that I took intermediate painting, which was figure painting. And in the sessions, I would go in there and the uh, model would come and pose nude. I would paint her within an hour, two hours. It was like 
I'm, I'm taking a picture of her. And then I would go and help other students to, you know, fix their paintings. And midterm, I got a D for painting. And I was so annoyed, so I went to the professor, Professor Lewis, and I said, I've got a D for painting. And Lewis said, yeah. I said, it's a mistake. He said, no, I gave you a D. So why, you gave me a D? He said, yeah, because you attended the classes. <laughs> Otherwise, you would have got, got F. <laughs> so what are you talking about? I'd been in the classes. I'd been doing it. He said, you have not been painting. I said, oh, yeah? I've seen your own paintings. You paint in your garage. And I've seen it's like, you know, children painting. And that's why you're jealous of me. That's why you give me a D. He said, no, you're not painting. I said, okay, then teach me. And that was when my journey began into painting. I went in there the first session. I had the canvas on the easel. And Margot, the model, posed nude in there. And uh, everybody started painting. And I waited for Louis. And Louis came by. And I asked him what to do. And he said, hmm, I want you to, in your mind's eye, I want you to do a cross section through her neck. And look down in her neck and paint what you see. I want you to pay attention. The first step that he taught me was to go beyond the skin, which I was so good in it as I was painting, as the impressionists are, as many, many other painters are. The first step was to go beyond that, which I did. So for me, it was easy because I had studied biology and I knew that there is, you know, bones and skin and muscles and, and veins and whatever I could think about as you cut through a neck of somebody I'm looking down. I just painted the whole thing. And uh, students, the other students were <laughs> amazed what I'm doing is <laughs> different from what I'm looking at. But I'm looking at Margot, I'm looking at the model, but I'm seeing beyond her skin through her neck. So next time, I have a new canvas, I have it on the easel. Louis comes by and I ask him, uh, what do you want me to do next? And Louis said, I want you to do a cross section through her chest and look down and paint whatever you can see. Yes, I know biology, so I did that. Here is lungs and heart and, and bones and breasts. And when I got to breasts, that was a little bit complicated because let's see, there's a bone which I painted white or light. And there's a breast that I'm doing the same thing inside that breast as I'm looking down. But there's a difference. One has softness, one is hard. So I began to Imagine how can I paint softness versus hardness with the same color. That was the beginning of my journey in the next phase, which was developing connection with your inside. So the technology was something that I discovered through figuring out how to do softness versus hardness. And I learned that the way I land the brush on the canvas, if the brush lands without spreading anywhere, just strong line, solid strong line is a hardness. And if it spreads, fades out, into its environment, 
become soft. So he started practicing that as I was doing the cross section. This session was like, took three different sessions to finish this painting, which was a cross section through her chest. And next, I had a, waited for Louis to come to tell me what to do next. And Louis came, I said, well, do you want me to do another cross section through her? No, he said, this time I want you to, and he put just his finger on the heart that I had painted. As you know, you look down, it was the heart and lungs and all that. He put his finger on the heart and says, I want you to paint what is inside that. Now, I was frozen. What is inside the heart? Now, this is biology is not going to take me there. So, I'm going to go through thinking what is inside the heart. So, the canvas is there. And I'm looking at Margot naked in there, but I'm not seeing anything of her skin anymore. All I'm seeing is looking deeper than I have ever looked at the model. But I'm not seeing her. I'm trying to figure out what is inside that heart. And I started by the thought of, oh, she must be feeling bad. I mean, getting naked in front of all these people just to get some money. She could do anything and make more money and and I would come into these colors that I'm painting as is inside her heart. Students around were thinking, what the hell has happened to this guy? He's gone crazy. And uh, next time I would come back, look at the painting, look at the model deeper and deeper and deeper, like you know, half an hour staring at her that I have never stared at anything like that. But I'm not seeing her. I'm staring at her, but I'm not seeing her. I'm seeing what is inside her heart. And then I thought, well, she must be enjoying that because she is, you know, she, she likes to be naked in front of other people, all of that. So my colors would change. And the painting, I just kept on painting on the same canvas, week after week, <laughs> trying to figure out what is inside her heart. And Louis was going by and just smiling, seeing my work. Finally, I caught myself that it wasn't about what is inside her heart. It's about what is inside my heart. It is how I feel about her. It's not about her. This was a major lesson that shifted my paintings from what it was to what you're familiar with as my later paintings. So this is where the inspirational art begins. Staring at the surface, but not seeing it. So the first assignment that you're getting now in observation is to see unobjectively. If you have a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil in front of you or a canvas, please get ready for this assignment. Is everybody ready? Okay, then you're going to have five minutes to look at something around you, but seeing it not objectively. Let's say if you see in this glass of water, you've seen it for the first time. You have no idea that this is a glass and this is water in it. Just like a child seen for the first time. See it for the first time as something different, non-object. So stare at certain parts of it, begin to combine it with the environment, however you can do it, but draw something that is not what you saw 
as a glass. So when you look at a tree, don't paint the tree. Paint what you see in the tree. Maybe suddenly you find that this tree looks like a, a, a dog. The branches are like dog. Or clouds look like something like that. When you paint in the clouds, be like Michelangelo. He saw the clouds, but the painting became that image that we are all familiar with from Sistine Chapel. That was his inspiration from the clouds that he saw in the sky. So I want you to see that way for five minutes. If you cannot do that, turn around, open your legs wide open, bend down and look through your legs behind you and paint and draw whatever you see. You see things upside down. So suddenly new shape shows up for you. So do that. You got about five minutes to do this thing in here. And then we move on. Anybody wants to show what you did or anybody wants to s tell us how you felt? When I paint, uh, I drew my dogs. One is one was stretched out and relaxed and the other one was waiting for his dinner. And he gets what I call food ears and his ears stick out like this when he waits for his food and his eyes are just staring at me like trying to send his vibe, and I can feel it. I know exactly what he wants. He wants his, his breakfast. So that's what I drew. I don't know if you can see it. There's yeah. two, do two dogs. Yeah. Uh, my suggestion is next time you can focus more on that part rather than the dog itself. Just focus on the expression that she has. Okay. You know. Yeah. yeah. Work on the feeling of the dog, the, what you see. That's okay. the power of observation. Observe inside. Just like I was looking at the model, staring at the model, but I wasn't seeing the model. So I was looking at this silk lamp that I have, and the first thought I have, well, a lamp illuminates. It brings light. 
So I started, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of light in pencil, but I started just with painting light and it became a woman. And the woman is like facing away from me with her hands, like her elbows high and her hands behind her head, like a yoga pose. But that was, it just, it became something else. So I was actually kind of looking at you guys a little bit. Um, <laughs> so, and I was looking at my my journal I have here. So I was like, okay, book. Because we're all kind of like opening our own books, if that makes sense. <laughs> we are literally opening our books. But we're also like our minds. They went to like our minds opening, mm -hmm. right? So it's kind of like a flower pot in a way and it's kind of like a book spilling out something that's what I was in the process of doing and these were supposed to be like little like words or just our ideas you know spilling out I drew like a flower here also like this kind of just our minds you know and we're just spilling out what we have inside into like the external um literally just the external so yeah I think when you move it back it yeah a little bit back it focuses it a little. Is that, like, is that better now? A little bit better, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, as, as it is, it's just waves. I tell you, I was looking out of the window in here, and the garden is out there with trees. The sun is shining. The way what I, what I saw, what I felt was the vibrations of the garden in receiving the warmth of the sun. Beautiful. Thank and you. This, this is it. So I was looking at these two little things that I have on my desk, and I always imagining he is reading book for her. So I draw her ears that listening to. I was drawing um, her ears, for example, that listening to the words that he is telling her. Like the <laughs> words of the books. That's all. So, so here's mine. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what that is, is me with a headache looking under my chair. <laughs> Looks like a bunch of, I don't know what I'm looking at, the bottom of the chair and the rug. And it's like, I'm not used to not knowing what I'm doing here. So I kind of like it. <laughs> sort of a mess. <laughs> yeah, that's me. A mess. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I have these little birds sitting on my desk kissing. And um, so I was just looking at them just seeing them without really looking at the, uh, the looking at the paper. And yeah. I just had a few of them. Yeah. And then they just all came out as an expression. <laughs> had another little thing on my desk that was this little people. Mm -hmm. uh, that my grandmother gave me and I really feel a lot of affection for them. And then these again, not really looking too much at the little the little creature, but just um, allowing whatever came with the lines to come. What what she what she had captured was the relationship of these two items together, mm -hmm. the relationship, mm -hmm. the the camaraderie. When you draw or paint, the inside the feeling, the emotion of what you see, it doesn't need to be necessarily lined up logically. Like you could have one eye in here, one eye in there, or whatever happens. The logical aspect of it should be thrown away. Picasso did that early in the, in the cubism. So you are getting inside. So logical external look shouldn't mean anything to you. Just go inside of that and be as illogical as you can. Be as mindless as you can. So you could come up with ideas that would get you excited. I don't know what I draw, to be honest. <laughs> Good. I'm glad that you don't know what you've done. That's important. <laughs> there is this glass of wine in front of me. Uh, but I thought, what if the wine... It can be out of 
the glass. I don't know if it looks like a glass. It's not yeah, good. 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 We see it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, no. Good. This, way, this way. Yeah. Just stay right there. Don't move. Yeah. It. Yeah. Good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. If you uh, <laughs> extended your your journey from observation to yeah. the next level, beautiful. Yes. You're even ahead of me. Good. To oh. <laughs> <So> your students. <laughs> <laughs> Similar to Kosar, I looked at the glass of water and then I imagined that it was being peeled back, peeling yeah. back the yeah. glass and letting the water escape and flow out and find its way. Yeah. Beautiful. This is that. That's uh, awesome. I was looking in the teapot, but in front of me, and then suddenly I noticed that this teapot always make me warm and became a sun for me. So oh. I think beautiful. Let me see. Mm. Beautiful. So I love my cup. Oh, I guess you can't see it. Wait a second. Yeah, I can see. Well, it okay. disappears, but you can I see can. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what I so what I did was I just kind of um, drew. I didn't have I didn't have my um, regular drawing pencils, so I had pen this new pen and i was just playing with it it kind of progressed as i played and played more with it and then i finally got down to just doing the basic and i thought wow that was fun so i was looking at my coffee mug here and it made me think of like a mountain and a lake so you can see that um, uh, yeah. <laughs> the handle being the root and then the water he has bees the there too bee, bee, bee. <laughs> I love it. It's already surrealist. <laughs> I have on my desk uh, a piece of coral that I picked up on the Sea of Galilee a long time ago. And um, it's just very plain, but when I did it, um, a face came and also roads and scenery, you know, like it could be the bay of um a, a bay and roads and even a bit of a snake wow <laughs> it was fun you're right bb it was fun <laughs> yes feels like you had fun I'll, I'll never look at it like that again i suppose yeah <laughs> usually, usually uh, it's just oh i did a little scrunchy it's something very unglamorous on my desk <laughs> but very useful and I just started, uh, it became a feeling very sensual of something that touches my hair. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Picasso used to uh, get up early in the morning and go by the sea, which was not far away from his uh, studio, sit there, watch the sunrise, and in his return, whatever attracted him as he was observing became the inspiration for his painting of that day. Whatever it was, sometimes it was a fishbone, sometimes it was a rock, sometimes it was a tree, whatever it was, it became inspiration. Even if he couldn't find anything, he would find a, a newspaper somewhere and cut a piece of it and stick it on his canvas. So it really, the very first step in creativity is what? Observation. Creative observation makes creative people. Regular observation makes regular people, as simple as that. When you see a glass of water, and you see it as a glass of water, that's all there is to it. You're going to be a consumer of a glass of water. But when you see it as something else, then you become attracted to it. That attraction leads into inspiration. An inspiration has to be reflected. So this is the journey that we would be taking and the 
very first month. So this week, I want you to begin to see things non-objectively. See a tree not as a tree. See a tree as something that you see for the first time. And just find something that is not a tree in it. Okay? This is the journey that I want you to take this week. I want you to look at the videos that, that I'm making, not as seeing the artist's work as much as hearing what I'm saying. What you hear that I'm saying are my teaching of the different steps in the creative process. So as you watch the videos, zero in after each one of the statements and focus on it to, to hear what I'm saying. Don't just be a consumer of a video and which is only less than eight minutes and say, oh, I've seen that video. You only observe that video if you've seen it many times, many times, as you begin to forget about what you saw the first time, just the same way as we do with any object that we look at. <clears throat> as you forget about the first time, you would get into the next level. So zero in on the statements that you hear. You could even go back. I must have about, I would say, at least 200 videos of artists that you could uh, watch and zero in on the statements because these are the guidance that I give you. This is the manifesto for the inspirational art. So I want you to look at this video of this artist and then we'll talk about it afterwards. The master to inspire this week's painting is Melko Richter. He was a German multifaceted artist who lived between the years 1865 and 1937. Rechter is known for his symbolic and Art Nouveau paintings, colorful stained glass works, exciting graphic art prints, and fantasy book illustrations. The inspirational art of Melka Lichter has a certain mood that deals with human emotion. His paintings go beyond colors and forms to express poetic feeling. Rather than painting the real world as he observes, Lichter reflects the beauty and the emotion of it. His world is far removed from the one familiar to us, yet it bears relations to the reality in which we live. Lichtwell's artworks are often mysterious and not easily understood. He gives his art a sacred character through various attributes and compositional elements. The woman's nudity in Lichter's art symbolizes their purity. Figures in his paintings are usually in solitude. Melka Lichter gives exceptional attention to detail. The meticulous precision with which he handles his tools showcases his mastery over the medium. His scenes are infused with melancholy and heavy with meaning. 
it turns away from depicting spectacular events in nature that is the feature of the Impressionist artists. Lechter whispers love songs to us through his precise details and vivid passion. He expresses his unique artistic taste in every one of his variety of artworks. Melka Lichter was born to a middle-class family in the city of Münster. At the age of 14, he began an apprenticeship as a glass painter. At the same time, he took courses in drawing and painting. When he was 19 years old, Lichter moved to Berlin, where he attended painting classes at Berlin Art Academy. After graduation, he initially devoted himself to commercial art, creating artistic advertising materials. His fame as an artist began in 1896 when he found an opportunity to exhibit his works in Berlin. The presentation of his first stained glass works publicly demonstrated Lichter's artistic vision and marked the breakthrough of his art, which was to shape the artistic landscape of Berlin from then on. The success of Lichter's exhibit brought him commissions from notable personalities and institutions of his time. The stained glass design of Pallenberg Hall earned him a grand prize at the Paris World's Fair in 1900. From then on, he continued creating impressive artworks until his artistic journey ended abruptly with his accidental death in 1937. Melker Lichter was known only as a book illustrator for almost a century. During the second half of the 20th century, when interest in the forgotten artists of the late 19th century began to be renewed, attention was again given to the paintings of Melke Richter and his significant impact on the artistic landscape of Germany and the world.
Any comment about what you saw in there? Anything that inspired you in his work? Anything you want to share? I like the one um, painting it was like a city in the dark with the houses and the lights on. Um, that was something that inspired me because I could imagine each lights of each window are showing everyone's life and their story that they're living in their houses. Beautiful, beautiful. That is what inspirational art is. You saw the painting and you went on to create. The, create, the creation, the creative act continued. It wasn't stuck on a wall that you would say, oh, it was a seascape or it was a nice forest or it was a beautiful flower. No, you continued in your mind creating as you saw the work. That is exactly what inspirational art is. You saw the night in there, you saw the lights in there, and you went continue, you continued the artist's creation with your own creativity. You went on to these windows and began to see people's life and all of that. Wonderful. Anybody else wants to share? Go ahead, please, Randy. What I felt was a deep melancholy and his expression throughout his works were, you know, just that delicate feeling of that um, melancholy. So it seemed sad to me. A lot of his paintings were sad, but very beautiful and mysterious because mm. he... Mm. So I really felt that in my heart. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I felt there was a lot of loneliness and heartache and uh, maybe unrequited love. Um, and that a lot of the time um, he was living um, in another energy of pure love and ethereal and um unfulfilled striving. Um I loved it. Absolutely fabulous. Just makes me want to paint. <laughs> <laughs> and the colours. Oh God, love it. Love it. Thank you. Um, Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Um I didn't really feel sadness. I actually felt just like a tranquility and peace. And I really liked the piece where um, the woman was playing, I think it was the harp, it was a small harp to the trees. Because right. oftentimes we take from nature without ever giving back. So there was just a symbiosis between him and just like the vibrations that nature always provides to us and then giving back, you know, and just that recycling. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, he was really reflecting the sound of the nature in the figure as, as she's playing the harp, as moving in, along the you know path in the nature. Beautiful. Anybody else? Um, I, what I really felt in, in his work in the, in, in the totality from the beginning to the end, it continued. The artist was showing without wanting it through his work the inspirations the artist had received would come in the in the in the work was shown so it was like a, a journey of going through a journey of the artist's inspiration it was it was where he was inspired from that had allowed him to create the image and so it was in a sense i think what eluna said uh it was what I felt as well. It was like a journey, emotional journey, inspirational journey of the artist, figure after figure. It, it, it would come through the figure. 
the figures were beautiful. They were drawn beautifully. They relayed a beautiful story. But beyond the story, they relayed the story of his inspirations. Thank you. I really felt like um, his inspiration came through. And what that did was inspire me. I felt very uplifted and, you know, very heart centered in kind of the tranquility. And, you know, I didn't find the solitary figures sad or, you know, lonely. I, I, I found that I kind of relished that quietness. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Solitude. Yeah. Many of his figures are in complete solitude. Even his nature is in solitude. That landscape with the nice greenery and the figure in that landscape is complete solitude. It's not a landscape. It's not an impressionist painting. This is more than that. There is the air in there. This is poetry. It's not just a painting. He's a poet. He's a poet that instead of words, he uses forms and colors. Anybody else wants to share what you got? Yeah, go ahead, please. Kavit. I got a feeling of seeking. Um, I found that his, what struck me was that his styles differed in that there's some paintings that you wouldn't even attribute to him. And I found it very interesting to see how his stained glass style translated into paintings. But I'm wondering whether he was looking and seeking and his images depicted conversations he's having with nature, with God, with spirit, whatever it is, and whatever he's looking for. He's asking whatever he can around him for the answers. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, go ahead. Did somebody start talking or? All right. The, what's very valuable in Lichter's work, which is amazing to me, is exactly what you described. He has, in so many different ways, expressed his emotions in stained glass, in drawings and you know everything that there's a consistency in the emotion see this is what's valuable in the inspirational art in the impressionism in all these isms consistency of the technique of painting was important they had to you know like uh, the Coonies the paintings that you see, this is his work. This is consistency in the surface of the painting. Pissarro's work is the consistency in the surface of the painting. He's got consistency in the meaning of the painting. When you look at his works, one after another, from drawings to stained glass to on and on and on, there's a tremendous consistency in fit. He knows his feeling. He is clear about how he feels and he reflects it. This is what makes it so inspirational for us because every work of his that we see leads us into the same thing. It's not about his technique anymore. It's about the way he reflects his emotion is just the same way that I described. It was not about what was going on in the model's heart. It was how I felt about Margot's heart. My students starting to paint now in here. Can you hear that? <laughs> yeah, it goes on. It's still too early. You gotta, you gotta still wait. Yeah, yeah, you gotta wait now. See, <laughs> it goes in there, starts getting some whatever is in the air, and comes in bing, on the glass. <laughs> uh, anybody else wants to share anything about Lichter's work? I thought it was amazing that he had so many, so much diversity. Like he had some of them 
where the solitude was really just the beautiful landscape, but it wasn't just about the landscape, but some of them were very detailed. And that freedom that he had to go from just having open space to details and just kind of a little bit of surrealism, even with, you know, some of the painting, the the hair of the women was fire. It could be fire. And then there's a piano player in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> I thought that was very, very fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it really, it's, uh, it makes you pay deeper attention to the painting. It's not just a piano player paint, you know, playing the piano in the middle of the ocean. There's more things about it. You can see the waves and the colors that he's used in these waves. And you, as, as you develop your observation deeper and deeper into his paintings, you begin to know the, the depth that you were never even thought that you can reach for that. Once you reach that depth, you are an artist of any kind. You just need to find out what gives you the most pleasure. But you need to get to the depth, to the heart of the matter. You need to get to the pearl within the person in order to judge the person, not about what he said or how he behaved. Get to the pearl inside, get to the heart and reflect that. As you feel, as you feel, reflect, make a connection with the heart and reflect. Whether you're drawing or whatever you're painting, make a connection with the seed of what is there, not with the surface look of it, and paint it from there. Okay, any, anybody else in here? Any, anybody, any question? One thing that you might ask, what happened to these artists? Why these giants like that? Nobody knows about them. That's a question, right? Why is that nobody knows about them? It's all about marketing. Impressionists were failure. They were kicked out of the salon. Their paintings were not good enough to be exhibited. That's how they started. They gathered together. When, when Monet, he was, he was living because he didn't have money or anything instead of having an apartment, he was living on a boat on the Sun River which is a good idea. If you don't like your neighbors, you can move on. <laughs> I like that concept. <clears throat> he lived on a boat. And one morning, he saw this sun, this fiery sun in the fog showing up on the river. And he just had a canvas, small canvas just went on very quickly before the sun gets hidden. This painting, he called it Impression Sunrise. And a critic, when that was exhibited, not even in the salon, in a, you know, in the shop, that the impressionists were not allowed in the salon, so they, they exhibited in a photography shop in there. That was their exhibit. And when this critic saw that, he wrote, this is so ridiculous. This is not art. This is only an impression. That word, this is not art, this is impression, made that huge shift in the art world. From the paintings that we were used to, got into the impression of what we saw. So from there on, impressionists were seeing what they saw and they just had immediately, it's just like looking at something and close your eyes and picture it in your mind. This is how they painted. They saw something and, and immediately reflected it. That's why they had to 
paint from nature or from still life or from people or whatever, they had to look at something, you know, to paint from, because it was their impression of what they saw for a moment. And they had to paint on small canvases. So most of the works of impressionists are small canvases. Before the impressionist artists used to sketch something, they call it etude. They did this etude of something, and then they went to the studio and they painted. Every painter has painted in the studio, and they usually had a sketch. If they wanted to paint, let's say, let's say if I wanted to paint two mm -hmm. people sitting down talking to each other okay first if i was a you know a, 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 an artist before the impressionism i would just first would draw two people sitting talking to each other and i would not even worry about making them look like people or anything it was just person in here person in here my assumption i would draw it like that this was their initial sketch then i would get a model to pose for me so there would be a model that poses on this seat and i would paint the model or draw the model now and then there would be another model sitting in here and i would do that <clears throat> then after i've done all of these i would transfer the whole painting i would copy it on a large canvas this is how they developed paintings at the time. Impressionists, suddenly they broke all these rules and they just painted right straight from what they saw. So they had to, let's say, if they had to paint a, a church, they would paint it at a particular time of the day. So they would go back again and again, like they would be painting it at 10 o'clock. So the sun would be at the same place. So they would reflect what they saw right there. That's how the impressionist works. Now, as we go into inspirational art, we do the same thing, but in world, not out world. Now we see things deep inside and we reflect it. So we don't need to look at it anymore because we've seen it from within. So it is in our within and we reflect it. So this is what happened. The impressionist took over, the impression took over, marketing began to start selling the impressionist paintings and just went on. And all of these great artists from the 1880s through 1930, this amazing artist, which was really a blast of art in France and in Europe, this blast of art was hidden under the surface of Impressionism. So there were these great masters, great masters, like we just saw one of them in here, that their works were not seen because everybody was just buying and looking at the Impressionist paintings. And we've had it for about 100 years. It's time for us to move on from the surface to the depth. OK, is there any other question? Anything you want to share? Anything you got from the session that you want to share? Good to be back. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else you want to share about what your experience is or was? My, my best students even speaks more than you guys do. <laughs> we are observing today. <laughs> <laughs> I 
really excited to do little, you know, um, exercises like we did today. That was really fun. Yes. That was yeah, fun. we're going to be doing that. Yeah, we're going to be doing that. Actually, uh, I have decided to do a sequel to my book of creativity because my publisher, Australian publisher, uh, was not into books, more is into uh, tarot cards and, and uh, you know, they, more of the cards. And, so they, the book did not do as well as I expected it to do, where, you know, my uh, oracle cards are doing incredible with them because they're the best oracle card uh, publishers in the world. But the books did not. So the first book that I had at Columbia that was I was so proud of that they approved to publish it. Um, so I decided to have them publish the book of creativity. And they said no, because it's been already published. They would not do that. So I'm working on a sequel to the book of creativity, which would include a lot of uh, exercises into getting deeper into inspirational art. So as we go in through these sessions, I'm benefiting from it as well by watching the videos and reflecting it in my writings. This week is definitely the week of observation. Definitely, I want you to begin to observe, as I said, not the way they look. Get deeper beyond that and forget the, about the objectivity and make a connection with what you see. Practice that and combine that with the art of uh, Lichter that you watched. Get inspired by his technique, his work, and reflect that. We're going to look at some of the works that has been there before. Mm, beautiful too. I think I have Miss Baby here and she continued to work on this one and these works were from Marvell's inspiration, the artist that we last reviewed in the last session. Thank you. And I will put up the both that you send me, Bibi, and you feel free to talk about it. So this is, I really wanted to bring this to the group to talk about because it's been very, um, you know, interesting for me to do that whole process. Actually, I was, you know, kind of first inspired to do a nude when we were talking about Suzanne Valadon. And I had some trouble doing it you know it was hard for me to to do the nude and I couldn't do a front forward I had a lot of um you know I don't know resistance and so then when I did that it felt very stiff and um you know I have trouble drawing and so then when I finally just threw the paint all over it it felt like a breakthrough it felt like okay I was allowing myself to be myself and so then I keep going back to analyzing it. You know, what is this about? Is it, you know, why why would I choose to have my back? Am I um, am I afraid to be vulnerable? Is this too too vulnerable to put my art out there? And why do I have a mask on? And so it's been very interesting for me to to analyze this and what it where it came from and what it means to me. So that's why I was hoping to get some feedback. Mm -hmm. It's now, it's now got a face looking forward, though. It, can you see that? Mm -hmm. A lady's face under the dark. I can see it, yeah. yeah. So she's now looking out and looking. Is it? Is it on the lower right-hand side, Aluna? The face the looks looking up? Yeah, this one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because I can see another face, the lower right-hand side, near her elbow. Yeah, right here. I see that, too. Yeah. Like she's holding, then, almost holding it. And there's one at the bottom as well. Yes. Right at the there, bottom. There, yeah. It is fabulous. Fabu I love it. Love it. Me too. I love the layers. 
So love it. Yeah, the colors and the uh, yeah, and the uh, rivulets of uh, ink or whatever you've used is uh, very effective. It feels like, a, for me, it feels kind of like a breaking through, you know, it feels like doing this, during this whole process that we've been going through is that, you know, um, I felt like I was trying to do things that I couldn't do. And finally, when I went back to just painting, you know, in the zone, mm. uh, I don't know, it, it feels, I don't know, for some reason, it feels important to me that it's a like a... Uh, Psych psychology study. <laughs> Maybe I think it's undergone a transformation, as have you, by painting it. Yes. yes. I think it just sort of like stripped the skin off and then just unleashed. Yeah. Unleashed the woman beneath. It's beautiful. Brave. Brave. She, 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 she seems like she is in a nostalgic dream. And just as we look at the colors in here, we see these different scenes that, that the impression that we get from the way she's sitting, staring into infinite world, is feeling all these emotions of the past. So it's, I would say the painting is what I would call nostalgia. In the comments, Bhavani yeah. shares, I could gaze at the feelings in this art for a long time. Yeah. 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 I also want to feel, I feel like this is um, what we were actually discussing today about observation that we observe with two different eyes the outer eye that sees everything and the inner eye yeah. when we open our inner eye into seeing something in the observation when we feel when we see the emotions and this to me is exactly showing that it shows it's almost like she is looking she's beginning to look from the inner eye into the world into into the, her own presence in life and so yes that's you were ahead you were actually um um revealing the 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 lesson that we learned today ahead of times you were inviting us into seeing with our inner eye yeah thank you i i like what you said about the inner eye because i was looking at it and i was thinking it kind of looks like she's sitting on the whole world you know yeah. Like she's past the point of just looking at things from just the physical, you know, it's yeah. she's like sitting on the whole world, this whole globe, you know, and now she's looking at everything that's just so beyond. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. I think that the evolution of this painting has broken through into the flow. Yeah. And yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I feel like. I can now flow mm. with this. Mm. It's cooked. Mm. It's been cooked. I think I'm going to take a picture of it and put it on my glass for the ladybird to watch because I see a lot of similarity in the approach, mm. the way mm. the paint <laughs> rolls down. So the ladybird might even love that and figure out how to come up with some colors. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, that's the best compliment I could ever get. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, BB. Um, <laughs> this one is mine, and it's not finished. But I think just um, sharing from uh, you know that whatever uh, finished or unfinished is my promise that I'm going to be completing something and sharing it. Um, fearlessly with the group. <laughs> so I dare you not to finish that. This is it. This is you've done such yeah. a beautiful work. Yeah. Yeah. The expression, the expression yeah. on that faceless face yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Don't touch it. No, purely on touching it. There's actually a face in it. 
I can totally yes. see. Yeah. The eyes so, so <laughs> yeah. yeah. So actually, the, the, everybody's face in there. Uh -huh. I, I see my face in there now. And I'm sure it, some of you are seeing your own faces in there. It, it has potential for everyone to be included in this. Mm. Yeah. If you turn it upwards, I see four distinct beings in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It kind of looks like it's flying. Like it kind of reminds me of like a soul. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Upside down. I was like, yeah. I wanted to say that as well. It looked like a flying. Yeah, yeah. it looks like a soul coming down yeah. like, to earth, you know, like arriving or something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to, to me is is uh, for for a lifetime we've been seeing the universe, looking at the universe. I feel like it's the universe looking at us. <laughs> I see myself in it as I'm looking at that face. Yeah, yeah. The universe looking at us. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Beautiful. Thank you. I feel the strength of the spirit within. Yeah. Very powerful. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm going to share. We have uh, next. You have two pieces, right, Marianne? I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to stay on this one uh, and then I'll put this one. I'll put them together. Okay. You can tell me which one. Well, the first one was just like on the equinox, it was just a download. I mean, I just started with color and mm. then started to doodle and then the angels came forth and, and that was that. <laughs> and it was just really fun. I mean, I just spent like two days where I would put down a layer or walk away and then I'd come back and see something and, you know, yeah. spend time on it. And it, it just really flowed and I really enjoyed doing this piece. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely contrast between the geometry and the and the angelic as well. It's beautiful, Marianne. I feel like it's the veil between the worlds. <laughs> yeah. You know, equinox is that time when the, they yeah. say the veil. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I think on Monday I'm going to have to paint the equinox energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't mean equinox, I mean the uh, eclipse. The new moon. Eclipse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The eclipse, isn't it? It's the new moon. Yeah. 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 This is great. I love these little beans or this, uh, you know, they look like some kind of a mystical little, yeah. little creature. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the combination that you've created is very interesting and it's leading to something that you might want to look into into it deeper because see you've you've developed a contrast in here between hard lines and soft lines mm -hmm. uh geometric forms and uh organic forms mm -hmm. an interesting approach you've taken and that is inspiring me to share with you the idea that could be workable for you, especially Marianne, that you're taking that approach in the details of the painting as you develop in it, begin to develop a balance between the two. In the details, change, make a shift. In the little details, very subdued geometric forms, very subdued, nothing to scream in the background, very subdued, geometric form, maybe to say, stay with the same color as it is, or something that you would have to discover, and then do the reverse of it in the geometric in the middle, in the like in the middle of it, like in different areas where you have room, begin to play around with some of the forms that you've used on the background. So you bring the two together, and you fuse them together as a fusion artist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It sounds fun. <laughs> would be very interesting for other ones to approach it too. It, I think it would be fun. To, and this is lovely. Wow. Mm. This was inspired by our last artist, Marval. This is lovely. Thank you. 
Mm. I'm gifting this to my good friend whose 50th birthday is on Monday. And oh. she, she is an angel walking this earth. So I, I actually painted the background and the vines first. And then it was like, hmm, hmm. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, there's an angel here. <laughs> so I had fun. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, presenting to him definitely uh, give my message to him as well that I say this is the universe dancing for him. It's a girl. It's a woman. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> dancing for him. Yeah. It's the universe <laughs> dancing for her. Yeah. Look, looks like you too. Looks like you. Well, I called it um, Angel Sisters. <laughs> oh, uh, Wow. You know what's uh, so interesting? You talked about it, Marianne, that um, you did the vines, the background vines, all of that, and then the, this angel emerged. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what you have drawn is the emergence of the angel. Yeah. It, it's beautiful. It feels like, you know, it, it arrived, it came, it emerged. And then you you saw it and you put it in there. So you have you show this that this was like a final um, observation, final thing that you saw that came in. It, it's mm. amazing that it shows this. Thank mm. you. I think it's a layering, yeah. And uh, as an inspirational art, you've created angel maker, not just the angel. Yeah. As we look through the whole figure, we see these angels just coming out of her, one after another. They're flying out just to okay. eternity. So this just feels like the angel maker is, mm -hmm. is, is like a guiding others to be pure. Mm -hmm. And even the, the uh, flowers that you've painted around, which is lovely and it shows that same exact thing that you did in the previous uh painting the, the contrast that you've developed between the solid lines and the soft lines uh, which is seems to be a good direction that is attracting you to go and begin to just uh investigate on that more and more as you're painting just just as you're painting as your brush is landing on the canvas, keep on re recognizing that you are a fusion artist and you are fusing the two together. There was a time in the 20th century that they used to use the word melting pot. Mm -hmm. You know, America is a melting pot. This melting pot is now reversed in your painting in here. It's not melting pot. It's the creating pot. It's not shrinking. It's expanding. So what you've done this really is a fabulous inspirational work. Yeah. And Thank I, you. I also want to say that the way you've treated light mm -hmm. is awesome. That's what it does it. That emergence comes from the way that you have treated the light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love the delicate delicate touch and the softness of the angel yes. or the fairy. Yes. But there's yes. a strength there as well. I feel that the, the bottom of the fairy reminds me of oak leaves. Mm -hmm. So I feel that the, the, the strength of the oak is there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. True. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Oh, that's mine. Uh, um. Just wanted, this is a 10 minute sketch. And what happened was I, what I, I wrote this to create change. You need passion, purpose, and profound desire to make a difference. You need to tap into your courage and share your unique vision. And this mm -hmm. was something that I was presenting in a, in a, in a group myself. And then I decided to, to, reflect on this, what it, what it means, what does this statement mean, the, the whole process. So I closed my eyes and I did doodling. And then when once I opened my eyes, I 
saw what I saw and then colored it and put it together. The passion of my pro the process that I was going through, the passion showed itself. And that's what it is, showing the passion. Just 10 minutes sketch. And so I, I, you know, colored it. I wanted to talk about the process. I didn't even know we were going to be talking about observations, but I just wanted to talk about how we get inspired and how our inspiration is reflected in what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, I especially love your uh, tapping into your courage. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very interesting way of, of uh, describing mm -hmm. uh, the painting uh, it, itself is reflecting that so well, mm -hmm. so well. And it, you have even done it personally as it's, it looks like you did the drawing, then you did this thing next to it, the poem you decided to write, and then that touch that you brought a missing piece of the thing into the uh, piece that you stuck in. It just shows your journey. Mm. It, it takes us on a journey too. Mm. The journey of inspiration, Rasuli. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. Great. It's beautiful, Gitti. I love, I love how you, I feel the energies of the elements in here. And I feel that the person sort of reaching out yeah. to connect with the, the elements around and and to connect, I think, also with the courage and the passion. <laughs> mm, beautiful. But back to your message, I think the concept that you have brought about, uh, the very final statement that you have in there, in your message, freeze it right there. I think that's good. And mm -hmm. share your unique vision. It's so meaningful, mm. so meaningful. Many of us, many of us lose our unique visions because we don't share it. If I have a dream and I share it with somebody, my dream stays with me a lot longer than if I had a dream and I did not share it with somebody. Mm. This is a great practice in life. If you want to really, truly be successful in what you're doing, share it with others, not because of others, because of you. Share it because by sharing, it becomes a part of you. In a way, you share it with yourself. So it expands. It expands. And you've said it in here so beautifully. And share your unique vision. That's mm -hmm. why we become artists. That's why people lose their lives. Rembrandt died on the steps of where he wanted to buy that yellow paint that he needed. And he did not go to the butcher market to buy some meat to eat so he would not die of malnutrition. This is how people share their unique visions. These are great masters that we have to recognize and don't just say, oh, good, you're good. Learn from them. Learn from them. Don't admire them. Be you. And be powerful you, just like they were powerful them. Thank you. Thank you, Kitty. I always love the, you know, your, the sensuality and just there's always something so powerful and feminine in your, in your sketches and your art. I love it. Thank you. Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, how beautiful! Wow, oh. very money. 
Alona, you said the word beautiful. That's all you can say. You do. I said so money, money. Yeah, it's just so beautiful. It just feels <laughs> like. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Lovely. And this is our very own fusion artist, Kavita, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I have to say it, but <laughs> oh, I love the texture. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It feels so good as, you know? <laughs> yeah. This color just makes me feel like illumination. Mm -hmm. I feel like it, like it radiates out and it touches yeah. me and now I'm vibrating with it. <laughs> <laughs> that is vibrational, really. Mm -hmm. All that, yeah. yeah. The light and the warmth, vibration, so beautiful. See, when you paint from within, like she has done, look at that face in there. Mm -hmm. Small, little, nothing, three, four lines in there that she just mm -hmm. played in. Yet the impression is so strong. Mm -hmm. All emotion is there. Mm. Could lift your depression if you had one, couldn't it? Mm -hmm. So this, I was I was painting flowers, and I got a bit carried away. So the dabs of yellow were only supposed to leave a few dots, but mm -hmm. once I started, I couldn't stop, and then I just carried on. And before I knew it, the whole painting was taken over by by oh, these God. dots. <laughs> I, I do that. recommend it. I do recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was very meditative, and the yellow. I I don't need an excuse to paint it. No, now. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. Mm. Oh. this mm. is hard to paint a goddess. Yeah. Mm. Yes, yeah, beautiful. It just happens to also look like you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Your goddess. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I really struggle with faces. So, Master Sully, when you said it's a few lines, it's that's because that's all I can manage. I really yeah. try hard. <laughs> Don't apologize. A beautiful face. Yeah. It, it is exactly what it is to me. Yeah, I, I just would love to see this thing. Or maybe I could just be like Martin Luther King say, I had a dream. I saw this as a billboard on the Sunset Boulevard as I was driving, you know, just this huge billboard in there instead of all this garbage that you see on Sunset. Yeah. Can you imagine how we can change the whole world with that type of mentality? Thank you, Kavita. Thank mm. you. Yes, yeah, wonderful. Just took us on a journey, Kavita. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I believe that was what I have. Beautiful. Wonderful. Beautiful. Well, have a beautiful week. Enjoy observing unique way of your own and reflecting it as little as you can with a little pencil just have a notebook with you everywhere you go with a little pencil just just a draw a line or just put a mark in there just something to show that you're living this week to develop your power of observation power of observation have a beautiful week and I'll see you next week.